Hello, everyone. So I am Tony Lane Casterly, and I am the founder of a company called Culture. And culture is replacing government as we know it. I think every person in this room could agree that government as an institution has stopped serving its people long ago. Human life is not a means to an end. It is an end in and of itself. And any system that is built for any purpose other than serving the ends of our human capacity is a system that should fundamentally be replaced by our potential. Now, what you're seeing in this video right now is shot by one of my board members, Mike Zuckerman. This is a village that popped up over the last three years. A million people, larger than the size of San Francisco, New York, Los Angeles, and a third the size of the country of Singapore. These are people that will likely never have a national identity, and it reminds me of something, though. No money popped up over a short amount of time in extreme conditions. Burning Man. Burning Man, a civilization that emerges from nothing. What's the difference? Creative liberation, access to opportunity, and fundamentally capital. There may not be any money at Burning Man, but come on, who's kidding me? A ton of capital is flowing in to make that event happen. But is there another industry where there's a ton of capital flowing in at unprecedented rates with instant liquidity? Blockchain. The future that we are waiting for is already here. We just have to step up and own it for ourselves because that's what it's gonna take. It's gonna take every person in this room deciding together that this is the future that we want to live. And it is one where all of us can self-organize, collaborate, and create collectively. Now, what does culture actually provide in doing this, right? Like, this is nice. Yeah, everyone wants to live in Burning Man all year round, come on. Um, but culture is a system for self-sovereign identity networks and nations of agreements. Because if you want to take ownership of your life and the way you organize and what you have access to, the tools you have access to, the first thing you need to own is your life, especially for those people. They may never have a national identity. So this is web of trust. Now, what is web of trust? It's the idea that our identity is a process of stewardship, not ownership. So web of trust gives context on who is an individual subjectively and objectively. What are their communities and what are their skills? So you're a refugee. Your mom verifies you. She creates a claim that you're a good son. Your friend verifies you, creates a claim that you've known them for seven months and you have skills as a carpenter. You help them build a house. A family of five verifies you. And they say that you have skills at speaking English with proficiency well enough to teach and that you work well with children because you've been teaching theirs for the last three years. You actually understand now who a person is and not only who a person is from the perspective of identity, but where their marriage, their land titles, and other forms of contracts that create the foundation for jurisdiction are stored. So what if an ICO was not an initial coin offering? What if it was an initial culture offering, an initial community offering, an initial country offering? If we're going to do this right, we can't do this in a way that incentivizes the infrastructure that's building a decentralized future to compete or over cooperate or centralize itself. So culture is fundamentally blockchain agnostic. That means we work with everyone. We want people to be able to use any programs, any services, and any piece of infrastructure they want to be able to create the world of their dreams. And this is who we're working with. One of my business partners is an indigenous elder. So we work with the uh, Wakpala Society that was uh, helping to lead in Standing Rock. Uh, he's also on the High Council of the Maori. Christopher Allen is the co-author of TLS. He's a technical collaborator. He's stewarded the Web of Trust community for years. Our Network Effect members are all activists. And thank you. Because this future, the future that we all want, it's not possible unless all of us come together. The reason why I filled up my advisory board with a series of hardline activists, secret aid workers, uh, and authors who write books on shamans, complex systems theory, and the United Nations, is because these are all people that woke up one day and they said, this is my life. This is my life. And I'm going to take this moment into my hands and I'm going to own it. But I'm going to own it in a way that transcends who I am. Because what I want for this world is bigger than me. And the minute you find that place in yourself, that voice 
inside of you that is aching to be heard. It cannot help but take shape and take form in you in a way that can give you the power to change the way this world works. So go out there and create culture. Thank you.